Hi. Um, hello, everyone. So, how many of you use GraphQL subscriptions in production? Well, quite a number of pe few people. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about GraphQL subscriptions and uh, how we actually use GraphQL subscriptions and we scaled at, for the real-time monitoring dashboards in Visa. Okay, so myself, Vimal Raj Selvam, and I'm working for Visa in Singapore, and I'm a staff engineer. We develop products and platform for logging, monitoring, and alerting solutions. The products that we develop used predominantly by the, you know, the command center, uh, command center people to monitor various products for 24 bar 7 across the world. So serving the data is very crucial for us, uh, you know, most crucial for us at the real time. So how many of you know what command center is? Okay, interesting. So this is the command center. So people literally sit like this and then watch lots of dashboards, visualizations, you know. So this is how the command center look like. But people who, like lots of people doesn't know what command center is, but it is a very scary and haunted place to be there. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not the one who works there, but I'm the one along with my team who actually builds products for them within Visa. So today, I'll be talking about what exactly the real-time dashboard is and uh, what tool that we use earlier to present the real-time dashboards and how GraphQL subscription is helping us and how did we actually scale it, uh, you know, kind of a distributed model for us. All right, so this is a sample dashboard, uh, which is a Grafana, so I hope most of you knows what Grafana. Grafana is a tool which is mainly used to monitor or visualize the monitoring uh, data uh, in, the, in the format of dashboards. So let's, let's quickly jump in uh, to show how the dashboard look like. Oh, sorry, that's my son. Uh, not me, not me, that's my son. <laughs> Okay, so how do I put this in another dashboard? How do I put this in another dashboard? I want to put this in another dashboard. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so this, this is a sample dashboard uh, from the Grafana, and uh, this looks very cool, you know? So all the visualizations uh, from various data sources, we can pull the data, uh, data from various data sources, like, you know, uh, so we use predominantly the Prometheus, OpenTSDB, Splunk, Boson, so many different gimmick names, so it's okay. So, but the <coughs> real problem here is, the Grafana actually pulls the data from the data source, basically kind of a pulling the data, pull-based pull, pull model. Uh, you know, say for an example, I'm pulling the data for the last five minutes, and right now there is no refresh rate here. Say consider I want a real time, the data has to be loaded real time, I have to select five seconds, say consider my refresh rate is five seconds, so now the data will be pulled or pulled for every five seconds, and the data is coming in. Let's see. So on our network panel for every five seconds, the number of records is getting piled up, piled up. So this is very simple, uh, you know, sa dashboard. It's not a very big deal to, you know, put in, uh, uh, you know, get the data from the data sources. I'll show you where exactly the real problem would occur. So 
So I have shown what exactly the de uh, demo uh, pool-based model. And uh, so consider we have number of clients. And uh, so consider, uh, for an example, for a sample, we have one dashboard. Just, just assume that we have only one dashboard. And each dashboard has 10 panels. So my refresh rate, I set it as a five seconds. And the number of users consider I have 100 clients who is actually you know, looking at the dashboard with number of browser instances. And each dashboard has a 10 panels. So that means 1,000 requests per five seconds. So just for an example, if one request is 10 KB of data, that response is coming back, that 10 KB of response payload is coming back, and I have 1,000 requests, that means 10 MB of data that is every five seconds I'm pulling in. Which is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a small example, but at real time, we, we load the data more than this volume. And, but what we need then, so we, this is basically, the problem really occurred was, we have different data sources like Splunk uh, or uh, OpenTSDB or Boson, anything, and every tool has a rate limiting, throttling, you name it, like different things. And that actually causes our you know, data sensors doesn't send you the data back. So this caused lots of downtime for us. As I mentioned, the command center is very crucial. So for, for them, these dashboards are very crucial because they monitor our production systems through these dashboards. They, they expect no zero downtime of these dashboards. So what we need then? So the Grafana's pool-based model, the client is requesting the data to a server. Instead, we wanted to push the data to the client from the server. So that means WebSocket. So we basically wanted to serve the data over the WebSocket. So to serve the data, so how most of our backend has been powered by the GraphQL. So the real obvious uh, you know, use case for us to use the GraphQL subscriptions here. And uh, as most of you know what exactly the GraphQL subscription is, server sends the data to the subscribed clients when some event occurs. And the protocol that has been used here to transport the data is with circuits. OK, so a quick demo of the tool that uh, it's, it's a sample tool that I built for a uh, demo here. So, but predominantly it's almost similar one that we use it in production. Uh, sorry. So, <clears throat> this actually pulls the data uh, from the Prometheus. So, I have a local Prometheus instance running and uh, this is real-time data, and it is uh, you know, uh, serving over the GraphQL subscriptions. So you can see the data being, uh, without, we, can, we can actually look at the network panel. So the data is being served through the web sockets. OK? So, here now, okay. By introducing this, how much, uh, how did we actually reduce the load on our servers? Is what I'm going to show you now. Okay. So what what changes that we did for this to you know make it happen? V very simply, like we introduced the GraphQL subscription servers uh, underneath our load balancer. And uh, the data source is basically different data sources, as I mentioned earlier. So we have different data sources. And the GraphQL subscription server, for example, here, there are three GraphQL subscription servers, which actually pulls the data for every five seconds uh, from the data, uh, data sources. And then it serves the client over the web socket. This, is, this actually works uh, well, but there is a problem here. I'll, I'll explain you what exactly the problem is in a few seconds. So let's recap the, you know, the data uh, example that I shown. So consider the same example, one dashboard, 10 panels. So now there are three servers, the subscription servers. So that means it is three requests per five seconds. So from 10 requests uh, per five seconds, I reduced to three requests per five seconds. And also from like for 100 users, 10 panels, it's still three requests per five seconds. It's not thousand requests per five seconds. 
and the data volume, the payload that has been sent to the client is just 30 KB. So basically, that I'm actually pulling the data of 30 KB from my data sources. But the problem is calls, you know, the, the, calling, the calls to the data sources are redundant because all the three servers are pulling the same data. Which is, so we have to solve this problem. So how did we solve this problem is what I'm going to show. So we basically, you know, came up with this design, iteratively worked on, and then improved this design with some introducing this one, Redis. So Redis cache and the worker. So I'll explain what exactly the worker does it. Worker is just a kind of a small thread, uh, maybe we can call it as a node thread. Uh, but it is written in Golang. <laughs> so the workers' uh, main uh, work is to you know, fetch only the data from the data sources. It, it doesn't do anything. It just pulls the data from the data source and then pushes it to the publishes that particular data into a, a Redis key. So it's, it's again uh, leveraging the Redis pops up mechanism. So we publish the data to the Redis key. And uh, so, and then there are these three servers which are subscribed to that particular key receiving the data by Redis. It is not querying the data, it is just receiving the data whenever there is a data coming into the Redis. And so, what problem did we solve here is the worker is the only one which actually queries the data sources. That means this is what happened. Now, from three servers, from three records per five seconds, we reduce it to one request per five second. And f again, the same, like for 100 users, it is still one request per five second. And it is like 10 KB of data is the only one which we load, or maybe we'll send it to the client. <clears throat> okay, so just to recap, we started with the, you know, uh, almost 10 MB of data, and then reduce it to 10, 10 KB, of, sorry, 30 KB of data, now we actually reduce it to 10 KB of data. But there is one more problem here. The worker, the small thread, is a single point of failure. So we tweak some, a little change over there to make it highly available, again by leveraging Redis here. So we made worker as a highly available just to introduce introduced few other slave uh, worker nodes, which basically, you know, uh, acts as a slave nodes, which doesn't do anything. It just competes for the master. I want to be a master. That is the only job that it has to do. And the master worker node, which pulls the data from the, I mean, which is responsible to pull the data from the data sources. And if, if in case, if, if for any reason, if master node goes down, the, I mean, maybe like, uh, based on some election algorithm that we have written, it basically, you know, one of these slaves becomes the master and it will take over the responsibility to pull the data from the data sources. And uh, as I mentioned, like, uh, you know, the pink line, which is basically, you know, I, uh, that one particular node registers it to as a master with some TTL. So TTL is the algorithm here that we use. So time to leave. That TTL is very short time to period time to leave period, and uh, if the particular master node doesn't send any data, that means that key will become invalidate after a particular seconds, and then any one of the slave nodes becomes a master. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. All right.